Okay, so this is what I wanted to share with you that um, I now use Pandora to share music with my students. And what I'll often do is during the break, I will put it on. And then if I come, if I come back from the break a little early, I will open up the lyrics and I will follow along with the lyrics. This way they get to hear some different music, some Hispanic music. Every once in a while, they'll pick up a word here and there, momentos de pasión, right? They get to practice a little bit of uh, reading comprehension as well. And I've discovered this is a much better format than playing the videos, which can sometimes be a little iffy. So that was that little trick. Um, as you can see, we're now becoming proficient swimmers. We're in the ocean. Hopefully none of us drown. I <laughs> I'm doing my best not to drown today. Um, I just checked again, and unfortunately, it is not functioning. I really wanted to show you my asynchronous class because I've spent so much time and energy. I do have a snippet. This is, um, I prepared this class for my, this is what I had to create Um during my at one online course, right? They actually walked me through how to create this course site and how to set it up. However, and I'm gonna show you just this one chapter real quick, what it looks like. Honestly, it's nowhere near what it looks like today. Okay, so, sorry. One of the big differences is that because they are working on their own, right, is when you set up the module, it's organized, it's ordered 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Um, <laughs> that makes sure they're going in order. It also helps that if they have a question, they could reference it, what have you. Now, mind you, I said that I don't have Zoom classes with them, but I communicate with them all the time through the grading, they could set up a Zoom conference with me and also um, I do a ton of recorded videos. That was the other thing I wanted to show you here is Screencast-O-Matic, the instructor presence, excuse me. So this is what these look like, sorry. So it's an introduction. And now my real one, I have at the beginning, it's the start of the uh, Boston Marathon. I have a big picture here. So in your asynchronous classes, you have to use a lot of pictures to draw their attention, to uh, make it more interesting. And it always starts off with what they're going to do in this module. And then it goes on to this was a discussion regarding stereotypes. Uh, this particular chapter was all on stereotypes. And so we shared a discussion on stereotypes. And some instructors have questioned whether or not that's too sensitive a topic. Personally, my students have always done such an amazing job talking about stereotypes and what they've experienced. They really seem to enjoy this um, discussion. And it is a great way to get them connecting with each other. This is another one of the tricks with an asynchronous class is you have to, when there are discussions, so for example, they have a discussion on um, stereotypes, there's an initial post, but then they have to reply to peers and it's part of the grading. Um, so they get five points for their initial post, five points for their peer replies. And I explain that the peer replies have to be thoughtful replies, not just a thumbs up. Why this is so crucial is because, again, we have to create that community, that learning community that evolves naturally in the classroom. You have to create it in an, in an asynchronous class. So this was a discussion, uh, and it just goes on and on. And then we've got here's, and you also will pull out resources. You're not just designing everything yourself 100%. You can pull resources. So uh, this was a great tutorial video I found on YouTube. Um, here was a quiz I created. 
They have an optional practice that has, there's links to other places where they could go for additional practice. There was also this really amazing TED talk that I posted here, this lady from Madrid talking about stereotypes. So you, one of the things I learned at At One is that you're not trying to constantly reinvent the wheel. There's so much information out there in the, on the internet that you can pull your resources so that you're not exhausting yourself. The, obviously, we know creating Canvas course sites takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And if you're OCD like me, it's never a finished product. Um, and then there's a wrap up. And it explains, you know, what did you learn? Uh, what did you do? So this is what did you learn during the module? What did you do during the module? So for an asynchronous class, there is always an overview, a plan of what they're going to do in that module, and then a wrap up to give them some um, sense of completion. For Screencast-O-Matic, I wanted to sh share with you, I use it in two ways. Uh, so you could create tons of videos. Here's my 203 class. I use it to create personalized announcements. Come on. Hola, clase. Pues es increíble saber que ya estamos a la mitad del semestre, ¿no? El tiempo está volando y pronto se va a acabar. Pero antes, antes del fin del... So this was, um, this was a personalized announcement that I did explaining their first essay. They had to write an essay on their childhood and their youth. And I started it off with a, hey, oh my goodness, we're at the half mark of the semester. It's flying by. We're going to be done soon, but we still have a lot of work. Those personalized announcements really, that again, helps with instructor presence. I also use uh, Screencast-O-Matic, and by the way, <coughs> there's a free version, but with free version, you're only limited to 15 minutes of recording. I pay for it, I think it's like 40 something dollars a, a year, uh, and it gives you a few more bells and whistles. But for example, um, let's see, where was this? Okay, so here's one I did on basic patterns of adjective agreement. Grammatica dos, basic patterns of adjective agreement. One of my favorite words in Spanish is agreement, concordancia. What this is, is basically... So I just take the e-text and I annotate it using lots of colors, and I always have a system for my colors and my students know what that is. And then I will go through the chapter and then explain it. Um, sometimes I will do the same going through my actual pages uh, on Canvas and explain those as well. The grammar I explain in English. My announcements are typically in Spanish, again, depending on what the subject matter is. Uh, so this is great screencast-o-matic, and the very last thing I wanted to share with all of you is Zoom polls, and I say it's a plus one, that's a little nod to uh, uh, Terrell, the idea of um, information plus one, what have you, that with Zoom, we have a great little tool where we could do polls. If you're not familiar with them, you're allowed to create up to 50 per class. And the nice thing is also with Zoom, we can create a class template that you could, you could save over semester after semester for your other classes. So you're not recreating these all the time. So real quick, I wanna take a poll. I want to see what you guys preferred as your best practices. Adrian, it's not allowing us to make a choice. Oh, please. Oh, why? I, I it know. is. It is. Oh, for me, it's not. It's weird. You're the co host. Oh, that's why. I was like, okay, yeah. sorry. Please don't scare me. I cannot have another technology fail right now. <laughs> sorry, I forgot I was a co host. <laughs>
I was okay. going to I was going to ask Adrian before you continue. On Screencast-O-Matic, are you able to just look at your videos at a list view? Because I tend to sure. use Canvas Studio, and it does not do a list view, which makes it very difficult to look for videos. I just wanted to address this because people were asking in the chat window. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you can. I'm looking right now. Yeah, because when I go to Canvas Studio, I've even asked our distance ed. But it looks, when I saw yours right, um, if you click enough folders, that is, does it do a list view? Oh, that's wonderful. There you so go. This is, this is a big advantage, I would say, mm -hmm. with Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, so Canvas it's, Studio it's right over here. This little, you just change your view. Do you want a list or do you want to see the videos? I also create, the nice thing is you can create folders uh, and you can separate. So I've got my grammar, anything having to do with RVC activities, anuncios, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at our poll real quick. Um, you end the poll and then you share the results. Everybody gets to see. So it looks like the highlight is discussions. Okay, speed grader, speed grader saves my life. It really is an amazing thing. Screencast-O-Matic's pretty popular. Okay. Cognitive load theory. Okay, that's good. Now, um, super duper important poll. Let me just do this one. Super important. Okay, here we go. Who has the best French fries? <laughs> Ooh, nobody's choosing McDonald's. Boo, hiss, we don't like McDonald's. Aren't their fries cancer causing? Oh, but they're yummy. When I need my salt intake, I go there. Okay, so this is just a silly little poll I do. And of course I do this in my classes, I do it in Spanish. And um, when we're discussing food, right? I, Quienes tienen las mejores hamburguesas in and out, McDonald's, etc. So we'll, you know, or I have polls on which toothpaste do you use when we're doing a routine, which uh, shampoo do you use? I have had students tell me they like the polls and want me to add more polls in. Again, I think it's tapping into that um, social media mentality. They love it. So you can make your polls in English, Spanish, French, whatever, uh, whatever language you need. And it's a great way to have a little fun with them, to practice some vocabulary. And again, it keeps them sort of connected. So there is that open for questions. Okay. Um, I don't know. Did you want to show anyone real quick how to do a poll, a Zoom poll in case anyone, I don't know, does anyone want to see how to create a Zoom poll? I just wanted to check. Oh, yes. Julie, yes, Julie mentioned like I do. <laughs> okay, um, let me double check something because I don't think, let me, okay. I'm going to have to open up my Zoom. So okay, so this is the meeting we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And when you go, when you open up your meeting, you're not in edit or anything. You just open it. You have your polls down below. Okay? Do you want to share your screen, Adrian? Oh, I'm not? No. Thank no you. worries. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. So this is the, this is, this is the meeting we're in. I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to open the meeting. And I'm going to go to the bottom and there are polls. And now to notice for this particular class, let's say I've created two of 50 polls. And <clears throat> you can create a poll here. You could also, I've created polls spontaneously right in Zoom, but I can't show you how to do that. Right at the very bottom of my screen in the toolbar, it says polls. And you click on that and it'll open up and you can spontaneously create a poll right then and there. I've done that, especially for exams. If I want to get a feeling and you can make the polls anonymous, not anonymous. I've used them for um, pop quizzes. So you just create a poll. Uh, you title it. Okay. 
Okay, and then you create a question. You could do single choice, multiple choice. Um, you'll see, I, I have a sense of humor. Okay, uh, you could add choices. By the way, I discovered it only lets you add up to 10 choices. I discovered that when I was trying to find, uh, when we were doing birthdays and I wanted to give them, you know, in which month is your birthday and it only gives you 10 choices. But you just create the poll and you hit save and it's there. And then you could open it up. Again, you go to the bottom. Um, when you're in Zoom, in your toolbar, there's a section called polls. You just click on that and it'll give you the list of all your available polls and you could open up whichever one you want. And notice, save as a template. So if I have a class, uh, for example, my Spanish uh, one or yeah, beginning Spanish one class, I have saved that as a template because I have something like, I don't know, 17 polls created in there. Uh, and then that way I could use it semester after semester, which, by the way, it does not let you change the order of your polls. So if you are OCD and you want the order to go according to the semester, right, according to the chapter you're in, you might want to create the list first in a Word document or whatever, you know, jot it out so you know which order you want to place them in. But you can. Um, duplicate polls, I think you could share them. You could view poll results. So now notice here, I had set up this poll as anonymous. It doesn't say who did what, right? Who chose what? Although I believe, I believe if I go to, uh, excuse me. <coughs> You could go to the reports. I can't seem to find it, but I do know that there are, oh. There it is, try poll reports. Right there, poll mm -hmm. reports. So you can take a poll report and it'll generate the full report for you. Um, and this is, for example, It, they're processing it. Anyways, this is where you would go. Like if you use a poll as a pop quiz, you could go and generate the report and then you can see exactly who chose what. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go with a couple of questions that were asked earlier because I've been saving them. Uh, Elena was wanting um, clarification about how you link activities to connect. Um, do you, she says, do you think she's asking, do you synchronize your course with connect? Um, yes. Maybe Elena, you can. Okay. Yes. So basically here is um, my Spanish one class and I have it already linked to connect you. It'll guide you through it. Um, so I've already got it synced and what it, it, and what happens is that when I create the assignments in can, um, in connect directly, I work for, I come in here through connect and I create my assignments. I have a ton of grammar tutorials that came with the textbook or with the online workbook. I have practices, I have my exams. Uh, I create all of these here. And as you see this symbol, that means it is um, deployed. And once it's deployed, that means there's a connection between Canvas and Connect. So any changes I make here automatically show up in Canvas. Also, when the students do their assignments, the grades automatically populate to Canvas. Uh, I will warn people, however, so I used to set up my Connect assignments to allow for late submissions, and they would lose 5% per day it was late. However, it never updates. So if a student never ever did their assignment, 
it never gave them a zero. And that created problems with my grading in Canvas. Um, so my suggestion is I make the, the Canvas assignments submit on the day they are due. That way they always have a grade. And if somebody needs an extension, I can go in here. You just click on your assignment, come over here to assignment options, download uh, down to manage extensions. You could give somebody an extension and then go to Canvas grade book and um, change it, right? If you're gonna drop 5% for it being late or something. So I hope that answers the question. Yes, it is linked with um, Connect. Ma yeah, Connect, McGraw-Hill. Okay, and then Fabian had a question. He said, are you putting your classes on POCR? Peer Online Course Review or CBC OEI? I have not. I have not. Okay. And I'm, I'm still learning about all of this as well. Um, I'm not sure I'm ready to have my peers review my courses for me. Um, but that is not something I've looked into yet. I might. I might. And uh, if you want to share some information with me, Fabienne, do you want to, what is it exactly? I mean, I understand it's a peer review. Fabienne, can you help? Could you talk? I'm looking for him. He put sorry, a thumbs Sorry, sorry, I have my microphone off. Sorry. Oh, it happens. Uh, no, I think it's called poker. Uh, it's, yeah, they call it poker. It's uh, part of the uh, OER. Uh, o E I uh, C V C, you know the California Virtual Campus. Okay, sorry, I saw that maybe you were working on that. Yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to look for it real quick. I will put a link you know, on the chat. Sorry, I oh. don't want to take your time. No, no, no. It's fun. this is what this is for. This okay. is what this is for. We're here to do question. This is the discussion part. Yeah, it's a it's a, a state level review, so you can be part of the. Of, of the Californian virtual campus. So students can take your class from anywhere in California. Um, it's called poker. Okay. Uh, and you're putting that in the- I will, I will put it right now, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like this, uh, I'm sorry. Well, I the nice, the nice I, thing- I, I didn't want to ask a question that we create. No, it's fine. Sorry, that's it. Okay. No Okay, and then I think Alejandro and Marlene were on the same topic um, about, you know, how you can enter comments, uh, record an audio on SpeedGrader as feedback. Yes. I think Marlene was mentioning that you can reuse them. I think you can. I usually look in the files section. Yeah. And I think <laughs> that's where you can reuse them. Yes, yeah, so when you are in speed grading. Dude, there is a little box there that has also numbers, and then you, you can start um, uh, typing and pay, uh, you know typing your uh, comments. Uh, and, but the only problem is that you cannot use two comments. You, if you will use one and then you try to put another one, then um, it will be erased. The first one. Is this what you're talking about right here? Add to the comment library. Uh, on the top. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, perhaps is that, let me see. Well, right yeah, here. Right there, right, right there. Right here, yeah. it says add to the comment library. Yeah, add the comment. Yeah. Awesome, I did not know about that. I will be using <laughs> that again. Definitely. I just learned Thank about you. it. And you're welcome. And you can also put the, the accent marks, you know, a list of uh, vowels, the vowel accent marks, because mm -hmm. that's the harder thing. <laughs> you know what, uh, the, the easiest way for anybody who wants to use diacritics, the accent marks and what have you. The easiest thing I found, <laughs> um, and I share this with my students as well. Let me see, where is it? In course materials, this international yeah. keyboard. That's what I tell students to. And, um, it can be problematic though, because um, when you hit space bar mm -hmm. um, after, I think it has to do with um, the, oh, that's it, the apostrophe. So if you want to use the apostrophe by itself, you have to hit space bar. 
because if um you know i'm talking about the you just you just accent. hit the you just hit the apostrophe and then hit space and then you're fine yes yeah. so some yeah. students forget to do that though <laughs> so i give them in in the you know i give them all of this how to what they need their textbook what have you their oh make sure one thing on your canvas course sites make sure that you post any tech support in multiple places, multiple, multiple places, and they still won't, won't reach out to them. But I give them the phone number and I highlight it um, and that helps. I give them, this is a link to a little video explaining how to use the international keyboard. Okay, so a few more questions. Um, at Elena, yes, uh, I use rubrics, and I don't know if you saw a moment ago, Adrian also uses rubrics to do grading for discussions, etc. Yes, I do use rubrics. I am so mad that I cannot pull up um, my other course because... I know. So much of what I want to show you was in that course. In an asynchronous course, I know our district just network just had to go down. Uh, do you know about this, Adrian? How about using Zoom poll in a fully asynchronous class? I only know of using Zoom while um, a Zoom session is going on. Yeah, I don't think you could do a Zoom poll in a fully synchronous class because they have to be logged in th through Zoom. And all your students aren't going to be logged into Zoom at the same time. However, what you can do is you could create quizzes. You could create quizzes, and I haven't done this, but I do know you can use the quiz to create like a poll. And you could even make it anonymous. So you could just create a quiz on your course site. Okay. And then um, something about uploading the Zoom recording in your cloud. So you remember you showed earlier, mm -hmm. um, I think, where was it, where you go to CCCD Zoom? Yeah, and what I'll do is I'm going to pull up for you guys to see uh, my... And this. so I think they want to know how, is this something that OCC does, Orange Coast College? All or... the schools do. All the okay. schools do now automatically. Uh, my understanding, in California... Mm -hmm. All community colleges do this now. So this is the student view. If you come over here to uh, CCCD Zoom, and Cypress has a different name. It's all Zoom, but each, mm -hmm. dist each district has their own name. So they could come over here. Oh. So here they are in their meetings. It has the upcoming meetings. It tells what the previous meetings, there's the recording details, or they could just pop here to the cloud recordings and it automatically shows um, all the recordings. Okay. Um, I will also leave the student view because I want to show you. So it has, just to let you know, we get a little bit of more information. It has your upcoming meetings, previous meetings, Here's my personal meeting, because when you have a Zoom account, you get both. You get your personal meeting, and then you have your meetings that are set up for that particular class. So like this meeting for our conference is set up through my personal meeting. Your students don't have access to this. And it will not show up in their, it'll show up in your cloud recordings, but it will not show up in their cloud recordings. The only ones that show up in their cloud recordings are for the class. Okay. And then Mercedes was asking about sharing a picture of the Canvas structure. I'm not quite sure what you meant by that, Mercedes. Are you talking about how she was showing the modules, the 0 0.1, et cetera? So Mercedes Vargas was asking for a picture of your Canvas structure. Yes, I I like the way you have it designed. I know that by having the structure, we can go through uh, each one in our way and design something similar to you based on the structure sure. you, you have. Do you want to see here? I'll give you. Should, do you want to see the student view? I'll give you the student view and I'll take you through each page real quick. So my home page. Um, and this will be on the recording, or you can take screenshots. I have my homepage set up so that the first three announcements show up right away. By the way, remind students, they also get their very own to-do list. And it's a great way, you know, one of the blessings and the curses of Canvas is that 
you could have the same information in multiple places, which at first is overwhelming and students get lost in there. But eventually, once they start navigating, they'll realize that they could access information and it, it helps sometimes the students who are lost, they'll stumble upon the information somewhere else. I always remind them that on the homepage, this to do list is a great way for them to keep track of what they have to be doing. And when they do it, when they do something, if there's an activity, so for here example, the exam, if they take the exam, it'll disappear. Or you can choose it, you could, you could exit out yourself or it'll disappear for you. Uh, they could also use the calendar is a great tool for keeping track. And they'll see that there, are, um, these are just the classes. These ones that look like this little icon, the calendar icon, these are just my classes. But here they have an exam, they have their connect assignments, and it's a great way for them to easily see real quick, you know, what is um, coming up, what's due. So it takes them to my homepage. This is where, and it, you know, and I talk to them about, I say, you know, uh, how are we going to do a foreign language class in an online format? And I want them to understand it, they're still going to get a rich and engaging experience. I'm working so hard to make sure that, that it is a rich and engaging experience, especially to, for the asynchronous class. I, I immediately start talking to them about we're building a learning community. Um, I share with them my passion for Spanish and Hispanic cultures. Uh, I remind them to go through the orientation. I give them my contact information and then they have a little biography, which here is that uh, PowerPoint on how Spanish changed my life. One of the things I do, so when we get to the modules, I have my syllabus and the syllabus has all the important information. And by the way, for those who like to print it out, some students like to print it out, they come over here to the syllabus page. This has a printable version of the syllabus. So all the information's right there. They could print it out, they can highlight it, they could write notes on it. This has a summary of all of their activities. Again, another place where they can see what's coming up. Uh, it has the breakdown of their grades. And so that's the syllabus, having all the information. I make sure to give them the course materials, everything about Canvas, participation, guidelines. And I explain to them that they don't have to go through and memorize this. They're not expected, they're not, they might not even read through every single thing. But one of the things we need to help our students learn to do nowadays, it's not as much about memorizing information as being able to use their resources and find the answers they need. So I always, you know, refer them back, look at the syllabus, look at the course materials, look at the participation. It breaks down the participation. Um, then I have an orientation and this is what I do the first week of the semester. The first week of the semester, they have two assignments. They have to do a discussion. This discussion is their journey with Spanish. Um, they, have to, they have to watch, well, actually I show it to them the very first class, that PowerPoint on uh, how Spanish changed my life. And I explain to them my journey with Spanish. And then I want them to write or they can record. I highly recommend them recording. That's a great way for them to connect with their classmates as if they could see recordings of each other, um, to do a, a short explanation of where they are on their journey with Spanish. Have they had any experience before? What are their favorite Spanish food, mix, uh, Mexican foods, Hispanic foods? Do they have a favorite um, musician, et cetera? And again, so they have to post and then they have to do a peer reply. That is, Denise will get you in just a second. That is one of the very first assignments they have to do. And the way I set it up is the discussion is due on a Wednesday. The peer replies are due by Saturday, okay? Um, 
They also have to go through the rest of these. And then they have a self-check quiz. And one of the quiz, uh, one of the questions on the quizzes is about my biography, is about that PowerPoint. I ask them, which four countries have I lived in? And, you know, this is a way, and I let them know that if they don't take the self-check quiz that first week of class, they could be dropped. And all of this is in the syllabus. This is one of the ways to get them engaged right away, make sure that they're not, you know, postponing, that they they figure out what the class is going to look like online. Denise had her raise her. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't finish real quick. Yeah. So, so that is the orientation. And then I just have my chapters. Bienvenidos, capítulo uno, capítulo dos, tres. This is the one we're in right now to give you an idea of what it looks like. These are those activity, actividades adicionales. I use them as both in-class activities for breakout partner group work. And I also use some of them for extra credit. Their connect online workbook assignments. They have the link. I give them all the policies. And notice sometimes it says, please click next to go to the next page. So there's the next, the next. Now here, this is the grammar review. At the bottom, I have it say, ignore the links because this is not an asynchronous class. The asynchronous classes, you have to go next, 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 next. The, the synchronous class is not, it doesn't always make sense. So here I have it set up to say, ignore the links. I know Denise has a question, but I wanted to make sure these two were addressed. Sorry, Denise. Uh, Fidelina had asked, Fidelina had asked earlier, the Q&A feature in Canvas, does it serve as part of the regular effective contra uh, contact? You know how you have to have weekly substantiative contact between student to student? I, I do not know if that is considered part of it. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, as long as I would think the discussions, the actual discussions, such as the discussion on stereotypes or my journey with Spanish, that would probably serve as part of the contact because they're required to reply to each other. The Q&A, they're not required to reply to each other. Some do, some don't. Okay, and what about someone had asked about embedding YouTube videos? They have been told that embedding you were not allowed to embed YouTube videos into Canvas. I saw earlier that you kind of did, like with your- I, I haven't, okay. It has to do with copyright um, and it has to do with the purpose, if it's educational, what have you. I have used them in the announcements mainly in like the, oh, excuse me, not the announcements, the discussions. I typically do for, so for example, that Musica Favorita, um, because I'm not teaching this, I'm not using it as part of my lesson plan. I believe it's safe. It's, I'm sharing a link with students so that they could go view it on their own, but I'm not actually using it part as part of my curriculum. Um, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be breaking copyright laws. I'm, I'm doing my best to, you know, you'll see that often with my, um, can't think of a good example. You'll see that in a lot of my uh, pages of what have you, uh, this is not a good example either. I will use references. I will, um, my brain's dying on me. What do you call it when you when you give when you tell them who you're replying? Uh, oh, I know, I know. Here, hiding or giving credit. Yeah, thank you. Here, think, so right. so right at the bottom of my page, I I have um, I give the credit. Um, I try and do that as much as I can. I'm not. It's not perfect. I'm not there yet with everything. I'm still working on getting my powerpoints accessible and making sure all of my copyright laws are checked off but one thing at a time <laughs> so what was denise going to ask and then i'm gonna, there's two more other questions in the chat denise 
Sorry, it was actually just a quick comment about, um, I don't know if everybody like our district, our district took over administration of Zoom. So when we go to our Zoom accounts, it's, it's district run rather than Zoom. And that's what Adrian was talking about, that one of the functionalities of that is that if we automatically record to the cloud, it shows up on the Zoom page, the CCCD Zoom page for our students. But one of the things I would recommend um, in your settings for recordings, you can set for it not to share automatically. There's a place where it says allow cloud recording sharing. I actually turn that off. So when the cloud or, or when the class ends, um, it won't show up. They won't be able to access that until I physically um, make sure to check. And I do that because sometimes, you know, we have conversations before and after class with students that you don't necessarily want accessible for all students. So you can go in and clip, right? And restrict what parts they can view. So it's in your, um, your Zoom settings. You simply, you have it record automatically to the cloud, but you uh, uncheck allow cloud sh recording sharing. And then when it is ready, you go in and you just um, get it ready and then you allow the sharing and then it shows up for the students. It's just a recommendation. I, I've had that issue before where I forgot, typically at the end of class, I turn off the recording and then anybody stays behind. It's a private conversation between us two. But I've had it happen before where I forget to turn off the recording. And like, as soon as it tells me my cloud recording is there, I go in and edit and I have to cut out that portion. Right. So, so it avoids a little bit of panic of that yes. moment where you say, oh, I forgot to turn it off. You yes. just don't make it accessible until you're ready to share it. A uh, couple of things real quick, I just realized. I also want to show you. So the way I have my modules set out, the syllabus orientation, then there's all of the chapters. Now notice these chapters, I have them locked. I have them locked because I want everybody to stay together at the same pace. And I do that for my asynchronous classes as well. They're all supposed to be working together at the same pace. Um, and then that way, uh, it just creates more of a community. Um, they can like see it, they can see what's coming up, but it's not open for them to actually start working with yet. The other thing is, so after I have all my chapters, I have my essays. Um, I have created some documents for them. I have my five steps for good writing. Uh, and MLA format, there's a video here for them to, and I should probably put down here, I'll give the credit, this video for MLA format. I need to add that for copyright laws. Um, I give them a list of transitional words that they could use for writing a good essay. I show them a brainstorming activity because remember, I require when they do their essays, I require three parts, a brainstorming activity, a rough draft and a final draft. Um, and then I give them their, their essay instructions here. <coughs> so this is the essays. Um, I will then later come here and I will, um, let me, uh, actually I have it. Because I have this from previous years and the same information always applies, I then have general comments, comentarios generales. And right now it's not published, so they don't have access to it. But once I finish grading their essays, I will then publish this. And, and when I post the announcement, I will post, I will include a link to this page so that they could go and review the general comments plus the comments I make specifically on their essay. Then I have their exams and I wanted to show you this as well. This is super important. So they just took their chapter three exam. Um, I have a great big blue brain. When they are taking their exam, I'm in Zoom and I have the big blue brain behind me. So when they pop into Zoom and they see the big blue brain, they're like, oh, it's exam day. I gotta go take my exam. Uh, I have the policies all laid out for them right here with a link to their exam that takes them out to connect. They take it on connect. Um, this is locked 
until the day of the exam, right? I have all the policies right here laid out. I talk to them about suspicions of cheating, um, if they need help during the exam, what have you. I remind them about grading. Um, this is something I learned last semester because previously I just had it set up a, as an assignment and they would basically open the assignment and boom, it would take them out to connect and people would get confused. So what I learned is instead of creating it as an assignment, I create it as a page and have all the policies right there. And then there's a link to the assignment. The only problem with that, um, actually, no, it's not a problem. Uh, it works very well. It works very well. Okay, I want to get to a couple more questions before we run out of time. Okay. Um, so someone asked about using turning Canvas menus into Spanish. I hadn't thought of that. I do the same thing as Adrian, which is for her module, I'll have the French and then the English in parentheses. Yeah. But what about, I guess, are you asking about, someone must be asking about- I think I think you mean the toolbar. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. I don't know I, how to do I, that I don't, either. I don't think it is possible because I think these are set up by Canvas. I yes. think you have to be one of the administrators or whatever to be able to go in and change those. Uh, I could be wrong. Denise knows. Um, yeah, there is. If you go into the settings and there's um, there's the navigation and then there's apps, there's an app called Redirect. Um, so go into filter by name, type in R-E-D and scroll down just a little bit. Okay, that little arrow. Yeah, you click on that, that blue arrow. And so then you, when you do that, add an app, do that. I don't want click it. On that. I have enough apps. I don't want it. No, 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 no. Click on show in course navigation. Oh, no, that's not it. I go back, that. Um, go back up to filter by name, click R-E-D, click on that, add app. You're not adding an app, you're adding a link. See where it says show in course navigation. Click on that, and then you give it whatever name you want, where it says redirect tool. You can give it a name like Shenu, I don't know what you want to call it. And then you put the H, the URL that you want. So you can create your own menu items to the left in whatever language you want, mm -hmm. in English okay. even. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. And I actually try and minimize how many apps because, again, it gets overwhelming. I, I do as well. I um, learn one app at a time. It's not an app per se that like, it's not an app that the students use. It simply will, it allows you to create, like, you know, on the left, how you have home um, announcements, it just creates a new link. That's all. And what about uh, Adrian, what does at one say about using numbers for modules? I use numbers as well. Um, is it best to put one module per week or one? I use weekly modules. I noticed that you use chapter modules. I tend to use weekly modules and then I label it by chapter. Um, you know what, let me see. I guess the better question is what is considered a best practice? Um, when I did my online teaching, they said to do weekly modules. I was kind of iffy about it because I wanted to organize yeah, it by chapter. Um, I'm trying to think. They no, that's not it. Never mind. Okay. If I recall, they also recommended sort of, um, they also recommended weekly modules, right? Yes. Um, or two weekly modules, whatever you're going through. And that's how I have it set up for my asynchronous class, which is still not available. Um, and they're numbered. So it goes, and actually it's numbered like 0 0.01, 0, um, 1 point, or 1 1.01, 1.02, 1 1.03. I learned that I have to add that zero in there. Uh, otherwise it screws up the numbering. They, they suggest numbering, but I use it completely different the way I do it for my synchronous class. So I don't, I number, for example, I think I showed you guys, I number the orientation module. This is how I do it for the orientation module. But when I get to the chapters, I don't number them because 
they're not necessarily going, going in order. The, it's divided by groups. So I have my online workbook. I have all my practice information separate. They're my pages, my PowerPoints, my links. Um, and then my extra credit is over to the left. So again, I'm so sorry, you guys, that I couldn't show you side by side. It, I know. It would, so it would, I'll, I'll create a video as soon as I have access. I will create a video. We'll send it out to you guys. I'll let you look at what both, because they're completely different. They're completely different creatures. There are some similar, similarities, many similar similarities, but the asynchronous you'll see is much more vibrant in terms of the classes, the, the modules, uh, each page, there's a lot more pictures and it's, there's just much more to it, but also it's set up where they go at their own pace. So it's, it's a complete, it's a very different creature. Okay, does anyone have, I, I tried as much as possible to go through the questions and keep up. Has, has everyone's questions been addressed, answered, anything to finish up with? I'm checking the okay. chat window. It looks like we're okay. And okay. thank you guys so thank much. You. I'm so sorry for all the tech issues. <laughs> beyond, beyond my control. Yes. Thank you, Fabian. Okay. Talk, talk to you guys. We will, okay. we'll, we'll let you all know when the um, video's available with the closed captionings. We'll send them out. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you.